Hi, I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook and today I want to talk to you about fixture plates. Let's start by talking about what a fixture plate is. Most mills have T-slots on their table that you use to attach your work holding solution, such as a vise. Fixture plates are bolted onto your table with T-slot bolts and they exchange the T-slots for a precise grid of holes. You use those holes to mount your work holding instead of the T-slots. Think about it this way. With T-slots, there are literally an infinite number of positions you can clamp things down on the table. But with a fixture plate, the positions are limited to where the fixed number of holes in the grid are, and the holes never move. Let's see why that helps save setup time. To see how a fixture plate saves time, let's just walk through how you'd go about setting up a vise on a T-slot table versus how to set one up on a fixture plate. I've written out the steps for you here so you can see. Let's start with T-slots. First, you put the vise on the table, you square it by eye, you partially clamp it. Now you need to go find your dial test indicator so you can sweep a vise jaw and get that vise trammed square with the table. Once that's done, you can carefully tighten the clamps, but you're still not done because you'll need to be able to locate part zero and enter that into a work offset. Okay? Now, with the fixture plate, it's simpler and faster. You can see from the little diagram in the lower right, you drop three locating pins in, in the holes of the plate, use them as stops to position the vise, clamp it down, and boom, you're done. It almost takes longer to say it than to do it. There's no dial indicator work needed at all, and since the holes never move, we can set up a work offset once for where the vise goes, and it'll always be there. Easy to see, that saves a lot of time, right? Okay, let's talk about choosing your fixture plate. There's some choices to make when you purchase one. First up is material. They're available in cast iron, a variety of steels, aluminum, and more. Keep in mind that softer materials like aluminum are more easily damaged. Some types of damage are just cosmetic, some can be stoned out, but a big one that can ruin a fixture plate is bell mouthing the precision dowel holes. Also, the thermal expansion rate of aluminum is higher than the mill table or any steel or cast iron. That can also create problems sometimes for your setups. As far as the hole grid, there are two styles. One, you make the holes dual purpose. There are precision dial locating holes at the top and threaded for clamping at the bottom of the hole. Or, the other way is to alternate locating and threaded clamping holes. Overall, you'll need a thicker fixture plate for the dual purpose style. I prefer the alternating style myself. If you do go for dual purpose, try to avoid aluminum plates as there's even less dowel pin depth, so it's easier to bell mouth the holes. You want to make sure your fixture plate labels the holes in the grid for reference. It's common to use letters for rows and numbers for columns. Last thing to consider, and this is a big one. Ideally, you want not just a fixture plate, but an entire modular work holding system. The fixture plate is just the first step. You want to make sure that your fixture plate seller either offers a full system or that the fixture plate is compatible with someone else's system. By now, some of you may be thinking you'll just build a fixture plate. After all, how hard could it be? We're machinists and we just need to surface a plate and put a whole grid on it, right? Well, that's true, but be aware of the precision requirements a fixture plate has to have. You want accurate repeatability, otherwise why have a fixture plate in the first place? But here's the real catch. You want all the holes in the hole grid to be interchangeable. And you want to be able to make fixtures that can drop onto any holes in the grid. If the holes are not spaced accurately enough, 
in other words, the same spacing for all the holes, you'll wind up with fixtures that have to be keyed to specific holes, which is a lot less desirable. Or you may have to make larger holes in the fixtures, which reduces the accuracy they can be located, also not desirable. You might use two or three dowel pins to locate a fixture on the plate. To locate two holes accurately enough to repeat to half a thousandth of an inch, you'll need all holes spaced within seven ten thousandths of an inch of each other. So, make sure you can achieve that level of accuracy for all the holes on the plate before trying to build one. Otherwise, you could wind up scrapping an expensive piece of material. In addition, it's often handy to make a fixture plate that's larger than your machine table or larger than your machine's travels. This can be done on the same machine, but it's a challenge to do so while maintaining the accuracy of the whole grid. For most situations, it's better just to buy a quality fixture plate. Okay, you've just gotten in a fixture plate. You're ready to install it. Let's talk about that. I want to cover a few issues about installing and maintaining fixture plates. Before you put your plate on the machine, apply rust preventative to the fixture plate and the machine table. You're going to be leaving it on the machine for quite a while and you don't want rust getting started under there where it'll go unnoticed and start to do some damage. It's nice if your plate has keys to align it with the T-slots during installation too. And by the way, if the rust preventative contains a little bit of oil, as so many of them do, it makes sliding the plate around on the table to align it properly that much easier. Once you have the fixture plate torqued down on the table, use hole plugs and set screws to protect the unused holes. You don't want them to act as chip silos. After that, be sure to remove the plate at least once a year so you can inspect clean and apply new rust preventative. That's all there is to it. A good fixture plate should last a long time barring major crash mishaps. The last topic I want to cover are some programming tricks to make fixture plates even more productive and time saving for you. Once you can repeatedly locate fixtures on the whole grid with great accuracy, some interesting possibilities are opened up. Imagine being able to drop a fixture on the plate, bolt it down, then just plug in a USB key with a short G-code program that sets up all the work offsets for the fixture. Boom! Setup just got so much faster, easier, and less error prone. So how do we do that? Well, the steps to install a plate in this way are right here in a checklist for you. The G-code programming secret you need in order to pull this off is just the G10 code. G10 lets you set up work offsets and a number of other things using G-codes. So, you can program the setup for the fixture plate once with G10, put it on a USB key, keep that key with the fixture, and you're ready to go anytime you set up the fixture. Or, on programs that are going to use the fixture, Put that G10 setup program right at the front so that the part program sets itself up with the right work offsets automatically. Just document which holes are used by their grid location on your setup sheet and you'll save so much time during setup. Fixture plates can not only save you time, they can help you work around the size limitations of your machine's travel too. They're an excellent addition for any CNC milling machine to increase productivity. That's it for this video. I hope you can see the advantages the fixture plate offers. Be sure to check the CNC cookbook and cutting tool engineering websites for more valuable fixture plate information. I'm Bob Warfield. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back with another CNC Chef video soon.